It's that time again. It is time for a brand spanking new 911. Now this car has been evolving over the last 49 years, which makes it, when you think about it, sound like some kind of super virus. Anyway, the 911 has pretty much been a benchmark sports car for all of its life, even though back in the day it had a reputation for splitting people off mid-bend. Now they're calmer, and more manageable, more precision. The 911 used to be a staple of bankers and people who you'd rather watch burn than have a wee on, but now it's the car of choice for the discerning car buyer. I wonder if this is the all-rounder that everyone hopes it will be. As you'd expect from a 49-year-old, it has gotten a little bigger over the years so it's longer and wider than ever before but the new 911 has kept a lot of the 911 hallmarks for example this swooping bonnet line these rounded off headlamps they're still there present and correct and then well you have this pretty iconic roof line and window detail that's pretty cool and then at the back well you still got some pretty kick-ass rear light clusters and the engine under the boot bonnet thing but again, as you'd expect with a 49 year old, its bottom has gotten a little lumpy. And I'm not a big fan of that, but also it looks like it's wearing a flat cap. Another 49 year old trait, but still a bit weird. But while the exterior hasn't changed too much, the interior, well, it's all changing there. Everything in here is all changed. See, where there used to be a giant slab of dashboard going straight down, well, now it kind of swoops into the cabin. So you have this nice little tray for your buttons and everything's within easy reach of the driver and the passenger. Space-wise, you do feel as though you have a lot more room. So, after nearly 50 years of evolution, you'd expect this new 911 to be, well, the perfect driving experience. And I'm pleased to report that it isn't. One of the biggest concerns people have with the 991 is that its steering isn't as involving as its predecessors. You see, the wheel is now electrically assisted rather than hydraulically, so there is less feel as the electrics aren't as spongy. But there's a reason Porsche did that. Economy. You save a few MPG by going lecky, which means it's cheaper to tax and to fuel. And to be honest, if you put the hydraulic system and the electric system back to back and put them in the hands of a normal mortal human being, I'll bet you any money they couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> Hundred and fifty horses are more than adequate too. I mean, it's almost as quick to 62 as the old 911 Turbo. There are three suspension modes, Normal, Sport and Sport Plus. Sport makes things a little sporty and uh, Sport Plus, well, that's best left off in the rain. Basically, it turns everything up to 6,000 and this thing into an Exocet missile. And don't forget the noise button. One thing you must always spec if you are looking to buy one of these cars is the exhaust note button because what that does is it turns it from a nice sort of placid docile car that you can happily thread through a country lane or through town without causing any upset into a noise machine <laughs> Oh, and we have a car equipped with the PDK automatic gearbox. In town, it'll either cling on to gears far too long or it won't be able to make up its mind. So you'll be doing 30 and go, ah, 30, you'll want fifth. Oh, no, wait, you want fourth. No, oh, you put a little bit of gas on there. You might, oh, no, in which case you definitely want third. Oh, no, you actually want fifth because you're still doing 30. Oh, dear. And it's very confusing and quite annoying. People don't like sports cars because they're inefficient and bad for the environment and all that nonsense. But this one comes with a 3.4 litre flat six engine that produces 350 brake horsepower, 288 pound per foot of torque. It'll do 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. It'll top out at over 175 miles an hour and it'll do 30, well, more than 30 miles to the gallon. And it'll also emit less than 200 grams per kilometre of CO2, which means it's actually semi-reasonable to tax in a 911. So, is the 911 still the ultimate sports car? 
Maybe actually, maybe, but I think it's more than that now. I think it's more of a GT than it ever has been before. It's bigger, so there's more space for your passengers and their things. It's more economical, which means you can drive further on a single tank. It's better for the environment, which isn't really a, a GT attribute, but it's still damn handy to have. People may be decrying the fact that, oh, it's not as much of a sports car as it used to be, but Sodom. Because all it means is that the 911 has evolved a little earlier than we thought it would be, and a little further than we thought it would. And that's no bad thing. It's no bad thing at all.